this show is about the merchandise that was released for Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. And although we're looking at the TV series, this was actually spun off from the movie that we spoke about earlier that had Walter Pigeon and um, Frankie Avalon and Barbara Eden. And this was the poster. And like a lot of the posters from the time, the graphics are amazing for this stuff. And you can understand why people collect stuff from this era. And you've got the poster there and some of the lobby cards and then you've got some of the later releases and it's nice to see that the voyage to the bottom of the sea logo has pretty much remained the same from the original movie 60 years ago right through to the blu-ray release now yeah. um so this is one of the earlier pieces of merchandise from the actual tv show and this is the voyage to the bottom of the sea trading cards now the ones that were originally released uh, back in the 60s are the black and white ones and the majority of the stuff that's there. And they, of course, um, are mainly pictures from the first series. I think these were released during the first series, so they're only pictures from the first series. And you've got the empty uh, packets of gum and you've got a full box of cards unopened down the uh, bottom there that is exceptionally rare. The, the sets go for a couple of hundred dollars in sort of just good used condition and the packets go for a similar price just for a, a packet or an empty packet. Um, later down the track, they did release a series of cards, which I think was called the uh, the Fantasy World of Erwin Allen. And there were a series of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea ones in that. And up the top right corner, you can see there's a few of those cards. But a lot of people collect gum cards, and this is a particularly hard set. I don't think I've seen any of these in Australia. Now, it's an interesting thing with um, the Irwin Allen Show comics that growing up, there was always the main comic companies, and they were Marvel and DC. But Irwin Allen Shows always went to Golden Key and the offshoot, which was Dell here, so you would get them. And I think this is great because it's kind of got a totally different house style from the Marvel and DC. Star Trek were Golden Key comics as well, and they had these painterly covers with amazing graphics that were often just absolutely action-packed and looked like a classy comic just because it was a step above the sort of uh, line work that Marvel and DC were doing at the time. Now, I remember finding these in op shops because I was too young when they came out to see them, and they would always stand out amongst the piles of comics that were there. At the time, no one really collected them. They were kind of sort of, oh, they're not as good as Marvel, DC, but I think they have an amazing charm and they're quite well done. Um, and if you pick them up, they are still quite stunning, and you can find them for reasonable prices. Now, they were popular enough and the show was popular enough that it did have comics um, all over the world. And the TV21 is the English version of the comics and they had a regular Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea uh, page. It wasn't like the full comic like the US version. And then there is um, TV uh, Tornado Annuals, which is a British annual that included Boy Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. It is interesting with Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, the sea view, which is the submarine, is often more popular than the actual cast, and that seems to appear, you know, on the covers of everything getting, you know, attacked by giant undersea monsters. So you've got a graded comic there, which was the, I always try to find the harder, highest grade I can find, which was a 9.4, just to feature on the show. So you can get some minty ones out there. And down in the bottom right corner, they're actually modern, I guess they're trade paperbacks, but they're modern reprints. Um, there's about three volumes of the original Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea comics that you can pick up on Amazon still. So it's popular enough that the original comics have come back into print. I, I do think as well, I love the uh, artwork from the time, and these are some of the jigsaws. And it's interesting because the jigsaws um, did some amazing art, and it was so good that they reused it on a lot of products that we're going to mm. look at. But it is it is also interesting with Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea that it isn't all underwater. So you've got a jigsaw there with them fighting a shark and a jigsaw with a giant octopus, but then you've got helicopters and spy cars and, you know, all this other sort of militaristic stuff. And I think that's one of the areas that Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea is an interesting uh, series to collect because it isn't just underwater. You've got the sort of spy aspect, you've got the Cold War aspect, then you've got the aliens and creatures and all these other things that, um, you know, pop up through the series as well. So I was surprised at how much merchandise was released just for Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. These are the board uh, board game, a card game, and um, the Viewmasters. And 
the board game uses the same art as the jigsaw and the card game uses the same art as the jigsaw. So that is one of those things where you do wish oh, they'd done something different just so we could have some different amazing art from the era. But again, if you collected Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea and you put a cabinet of this stuff together, it would look amazing, I think. It is one of those uh, shows that has so much going on. Uh, people, if you put a collection together, people would like stop and look and look at every piece because there's uh, so much art and so much amazing graphics happening in every piece. Totally agree with you. And I agree with Russell. Yeah, CV was very much a sci-fi version of the Nautilus. Yeah, exactly right. right. Um, these are some of the books and publications that were available at the time and a couple that are available now. But the, I think the one that probably all of us have seen around um, being collectors and at conventions and stuff, there was a series of hardbacks. There was a Star Trek one, an Invaders one. And you used to go, there'd be them in every single... Um, op shop and that was the one voyage to the bottom of the sea piece of merchandise i had uh growing up and that was probably the most common thing around here um and i think a lot of collectors would have that the other stuff i just didn't see locally at all and there is some stuff there that's uh, from spain so you can see it got like a bit of a following overseas and indeed in japan when it comes to the models we look at later they were big on voyage to the bottom of the sea um, there's a really good comment here from Thomas. Uh, said powerful words create great imagery, and that's the reason why the title works so well. Voyage to the bottom yeah. of the sea. And when you're talking about the book, and you look at the logo, and the fact that the writing is all over the place, that really gives the impression it's underwater. Isn't that it amazing? Does. So it's just the symbolism of the writing alone just sells it. So here's some of the albums. And again, when I was looking into this, I was just like, wow. And I do love. I've said this on a few episodes where you get like the Japanese version with the Japanese text because it looks so different and mysterious and I just think it looks amazing when you look at the Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea soundtrack that's just the American green version released with the title there and then you look at the, the Japanese version that's got the submarine and sperm whales and all this stuff happening with the Japanese writing. It looks absolutely amazing. And now we're getting into um, sort of some of the harder stuff to find, especially boxed. Um, Remco used to produce a lot of movie-related and TV-related toys. Uh, they've done Star Trek. But this is the Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea stuff. Now, until I was looking at this episode, I didn't even realise this stuff existed because it is really hard to find. And I think it is very, very cool stuff. Now, a lot of it is what they usually do, and they just get other toys and rebrand it as Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. So they have made the... Um, the sea view and then they've used a couple of probably space rovers and made them in yellow plastic and turned them into underwater modules but i do love the extra step where they they give you a giant squid and a, another giant underwater creature to go with them um and it's one of those shows that when you see how it took off in japan it's kind of like the Thunderbirds and stuff where they went nuts on the technology. And it's kind of what you were saying earlier, Dags, where when you produce something that hasn't been seen before, people latch onto that. And sometimes that's happened with spaceships. But for Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, boy, was the uh, Seaview submarine popular. And we're going to look at some of the models now. So these are some of the submarines and sets that have been available. Mainly these are available out of Japan and they came out from the 60s and some of them are still reissued today. Um, and you've got the sea view in different colours. And I do, I do think it's funny where you see, you know, an orange one and a blue one and a silver one and then you think, well, hang on, the first series was in black and white and then when it was produced in colour, a, a lot of countries didn't have colour at that time anyway. So this is why you get some of the different um, variations. So these are some of the model kits that were available and you can see that the um, the versions of the sea view are the movie version and the TV version, the colours of the sea view change from kit to kit. Um, it is interesting because I always thought the sea view was probably like an aquamarine or blue, but it's actually a steel white submarine. It's just because it's filled, filmed underwater. It looks It looks mm. blue. So even I'm not on the money when it comes to these things. It does have the unique flying subs and that's where it is so good that it's science fiction but it's just on the cusp of what you think is believable so when you see them you can fully buy into the story that the navy would have uh technology like that at the time and this is one of the things that captures people's imaginations and when you do that people do want to buy the toys and make model kits and have them in the bath with them so here's the first of um, Russell's slides, which I was very impressed by. Now, this is an interesting one, and I remember this, and you might remember this too. There was a show in the 
uh, 90s called Fast Forward. It was the sketch show with Steve Vizard yeah. and Peter Moon and a few different Australian comedians. And every episode they would lampoon a different TV show. And there was Lost in Space and Doctor Who and a whole lot of other shows. But one episode they did Voyage to the Bottom of the Harbour, uh, which was kind of, you know, taking the mickey of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea and the Bottom of the Harbour scandal that we had in Australia here. And here is something really interesting. Um, they put out a call for the Sea View, and I heard this in my circles because I was in collecting circles, and they couldn't get one because they needed it to film their own version. And the only person they could find with one was Russell. So Russell's Sea View model is actually a screen used one that was used on an Australian television show, Voyage to the Bottom of the Harbour on Fast Forward. Now that's something to be proud of. And he has this model in his collection that no other person has because it's a screen used one from Australia television. So we have some amazing um, collectors in our little group here tonight. So thank you very much, Russell, for sharing this with everyone. So we move away from the models, and as you can see, they were quite impressive and there was all different types. And this is kind of just a roundup of the stuff that was left that didn't really fit into any particular um, category. But what I found interesting, you've got the amazing lunchbox. Now, in, in America, they did this for just about everything. In Australia, we got totally missed out. We didn't really have metal lunchboxes here. But in America, if you like HR Puff and Stuff, you could get a HR Puff and Stuff lunchbox and it was much the same with voyage to the bottom of the sea you would have the uh, lunchbox and the thermos and it had amazing graphics now it's very hard to get but really recently they used that exact same image for a voyage to the bottom of the sea license plate and it just shows you that some of these images and artistry that go way back to the 60s are still just as relevant and loved now and they did a whole series of um, these license plates and we'll look at some of them in other other relevant episodes. But I did think it was interesting that instead of creating new art, they actually go back and use the original stuff because it's so good. Um, one of the most interesting and bizarre collectibles that you could ever think of, um, they're not as easy to see, but if you look down the bottom centre there, uh, they look like a series of cards. Do you know what they are, Dags? Because I didn't. Uh, no, no idea. They are actually cigar rings. So you could buy a pack of cigars and you could collect all your favourite characters from Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. So when you get your cigar, you take the cigar ring off and you keep it. And I had never heard of, of that one before. So I thought that was a pretty unusual set of collectibles. And it's it's like when you're scanning the internet, there's still areas that you find stuff of you never, ever knew existed. Now, there's, there was a lot of um, Japanese items and there is sort of a, a series of photos there and you could buy these sort of envelopes and they came with um, film slide pictures of all your favourite TV shows and Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea was was one of them. A um, couple of things just very, very quickly. Uh, Russell did mention though he didn't get credited on the show but he got 100 bucks for its use so that was all pretty groovy. And I love that this is a good comment from Christy saying the swim ring, it actually stops you from going to the bottom of the sea. So <laughs> not, not many voyages to be had with a swim a ring, what can I say? But, uh, yeah, some very, very yeah. groovy stuff there. Um, and this is the different media releases of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea over the years. Um, and now, Dags, you would remember this because I'm sure you were in the same position where you were collecting or looking at um, videos. Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea was one of those really annoying, annoying video releases where every single video had exactly the same picture and they just had the different title on the, on the tape um for the vhs release back in the 80s which i used to find incredibly annoying when they do that with series i like very very hard to find any vintage voyage to the bottom of the sea tapes uh, second hand in australia i don't think they released that many on australian ebay when i was looking there was only two out of all the listings um they of course released the movie as a video and that is probably easier to get than the tv mm. series since then there have been a Blu-ray and DVD release of the movie and the um, TV series. I do find it interesting. If you look at the Blu-ray on the bottom right there, they've got the original movie picture and then someone has done like an updated picture with giant tentacles. The original one is a million times better. I don't know why they would have um, changed it, but um, I guess that's trying to get maybe, you know, people that like The Meg or one of those more modern horror movies and they would be bitterly disappointed when they got it home and it wasn't the same thing. 
And then the DVD release, they have released all the series of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea on DVD that you can pick up and watch. And I am definitely going to revisit it after looking at the merchandise that was available because it does look like it was one of those shows that I think deserves a rewatch um, after not looking at it for at least 20 years. Uh, believe it or not, that actually figures to the end of the episode and we've actually wrapped up on right. time. Right on time. That? Yeah. 